welcome, 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 dear listeners. Welcome to Achtung Grassroots. My name is Nick Hart, and welcome to the Terence Macmillan Stadium, which is essentially part of Newham Leisure Centre. For anyone that knows the area, come off the A13 at the Prince Regent Lane Junction, and there's Newham Leisure Centre. And adjoining it is an athletics track with a football field in the middle, which uh, carries the name of Terence Macmillan Stadium. We are here, dear listeners, for the the Essex Senior Football League Cup, also known as the Errington Challenge Cup, clash between one of London's oldest clubs, Clapton FC, um, a, a club that goes back to the 1870s, if you can believe it, um, versus uh, Cockfosters at the end of the Piccadilly line, I believe it, Cockfosters. Um, so this uh, Challenge Cup round, this is a, a competition for all of the clubs in the Essex Senior League, which includes Clapton and, and Cock Fosters. And um, it's a cold and damp, unwelcoming <laughs> January night. The, the stadium itself is... Um, I actually know it quite well. I used to, I used to come to the gym here before um, I had my little bit of trouble during the summertime. Some might say that might contribute to my troubles. I don't know. But I used to use the Newham uh, Leisure Centre gym quite regularly which I haven't done since, and um, would sometimes take to the track just for a little bit of a jog round, if you know what I mean. Um, so it's quite familiar territory. It's quite strange to be here for um, you know, a proper game. It is a fairly... Uh, you can't say there's much atmosphere here. I know that Clapton have had their uh, troubles. There are two clubs, famously, of course, using the name of Clapton. This is the original, um, Clapton FC. And without delving too deeply into the off-field controversies, there is a breakaway club called Clapton Community FC. So two two clubs called Clapton, both wearing the same kits, red and white stripes. And um, this version is, is uh, how can we put it? I'm trying to find the right words to put this, but this is like your traditional football club, I suppose. Whereas the Clapton Community FC... Uh, is is more of a sees itself as a as a kind of a left wing anti fascist club. Um, it's quite interesting doing a little bit of research for tonight's game into the background and history of of these two clubs. There's a lot of online angst and accusations levelled against the management of Clapton, the team we're here to watch tonight, from a group of uh, Clapton ultras, I suppose you'd call them who, um, it, it sounds quite angsty, a couple of years ago now, but they formed a breakaway club in the end, after much toing and throwing online, and um, formed their own club. They, they're actually um, favoured by the great and the good of Newham Borough. I, I, I see some welcoming, favourable comments from Lynn Brown, local MP, Roxana Fiaz, Mayor of uh, Newham Borough Council, and the you know, they wear... Um, Spanish Republican shirts from the Civil War days, colours. Um, so they, they, they seem to have the favour and the support of what you might call the borough's establishment. Whereas, whereas Clapton FC, the original 1870s football club, evicted from <coughs> their home at uh, the old spotty dog ground, which is up along Upton Lane, anyone that knows that area around West Ham Park, at the back of the historic spotted dog pub which is currently closed and falling to pieces but they were evicted from their ground and they've um, been nomads since but here they are now not far from where I live at the Newham Leisure Centre um, strange little story um, but I think I think certainly there's not as much favourable comment from the great and the good of Newham Borough Council and its local political organisations i.e. the Labour Party um, not much in favour of Clapton FC, lots in favour of Clapton Community. And as ever, being a Millwall fan, I am drawn to the lost and lonely and unpopular. So I thought I'd come down here tonight for this cup tie, just to see what's what. Crowd, there's probably about 20 or 30 of us, including me. I paid online earlier on, um, PayPal link. About 20 or 30 people in the side I hesitate to call it a stand. It's a series of rows of seats attached to a, a sports hall. Um, but a stand it is, a football pitch it is, facilities they are, and the, the the kind of outcasts of Clapton FC have a have a home. So who's to knock that? Um, 
So we're going to be checking in during the course of the game. I won't do a full scale commentary as you would expect the listeners, but I will be following the game and we'll report back at half time, quarter of way through the half, or after any incidents of note. So um, we'll be back in due course. And here come the two teams have been led out by the referee, Clapton in their famous red and white stripes. Looks like Cock, Foster's wear blue. Atmosphere very little. Um, there's not much in the way of facilities here, dear listeners. There is a clubhouse, but, I, but there's not an awful lot. Um, I didn't see any catering or anything of that kind. Maybe you don't get the crowds to, to um, justify it, I don't know. But here come the two teams, being led out by the ref, as I said. The Essex Senior League covers Essex, Hertfordshire, London, Middlesex and the Amateur Football Alliance. I'm just reading from the Wikipedia, if you think my knowledge of the Essex Senior League is extensive. It is a feeder league to Division 1 North of the Ishmael League and sits at Level 9 in the FA's tier system. So, some way down. Probably the lowest level game that I've been to. And it's quite interesting. It's very quiet. Quite kind of um, windswept location, really. Think of a floodlit... Uh, sports centre um, uh, athletics track and you'll have a good picture of, um, of tonight's game other ties in the Errington Challenge Cup it was a, apparently it was an, an official of the Essex Senior League other ties FC Clacton v Athletic Newham Sawbridgeworth Town versus Woodford Town Stansted v Redbridge Stanway Rovers versus West Essex Walthamstow versus South and Manor tonight's game Clapton v Cockfusters uh, Enfield versus Saffron Walden Town and White Ensign was a great name for a club. White Ensign versus Hoddesdon Town. So Clapton are placed 17th in the in the table, um, whereas Cockfosters are 11th. 21 teams in the division. Clapton sitting 11th, so, uh, 17th. So um, Cockfosters will be expected to be favourites. I'm guessing. About to kick it off. And away we go. Clapton attacking the Newham Hospital end of the ground. Cockfusters will be attacking the Leisure Centre end. Not sure those are the official names, but that's what we'll stick with. Great name, Cockfusters. Great badge. Incident. It's kind of got like a French um, Art Deco script with a, an artistically drawn cockerel. Very nice badge. Clapton's badge features a, a, what looks like a couple of crossed hammers, which is always unsettling for any Millwall fan to see on a club badge. Clapton formed in 1877, actually older than Millwall. How about that, dear listeners? Difficult times in recent years. They were playing, as I've said earlier on, at the Spotted Dog Ground, which is um, historic. I think it's London's oldest sporting venue, um, which is being refurbished now by the community club, Clapton. Nothing to do with this uh, entity that we're watching tonight. Uh, and I hope to be able to speak to Clapton Chairman Chris Ottaway after our coverage of this game, just to get a bit of a rundown on, on what his plans are and thoughts are for the future of the club, because it is a historic club, and I'm frankly amazed that um, it doesn't seem to be getting the love from the great and good of Newham that the other one does. So uh, it's going to be one of my questions to, to Chris later on in the show, I hope, dear listeners. There's a lot of space, there's an athletics track, a lot of space at either end. It's a wide open location um, and of course the players have got to get the go and get the ball. No ball boys or ball girls at this level, dear listeners. Cock Fosters, as is the modern um, fashion, playing the ball out of the back. It's interesting to see, even at this level nine of the game, that fashion holds good here too. Nothing much to report so far, we're about five minutes Five and a half minutes into the into the game. Break on here for Cockfosters. The two couldn't get the get the cross in. Unfortunately, has that gone for a corner? It has gone for a corner. Six minutes. I'll stay with this. This has been the first opportunity for goal mouth action of the game so far. Taken short is the eleven. He's looked quite nippy. This eleven cuts inside. A shot on target. Goalkeeper's down low to collect. No problem there, dear listeners. One thing I will note, uh, listening to Michael's report from VCD in uh, a previous show, he commented how good the pitch was at VCD. Um, I've got a comment here that the pitch looks pretty 
tough, uneven. Um, it's grass, and it is. Um, I think it has been used for football historically. Um, I don't. I've seen the odd game being played here, but I think Clapton, the first team I'm aware of that have actually made it their home in my time living in the borough of Newham. Uh, so it's not a natural football pitch, if that makes any sense. It looks pretty much like uh, an uneven grassed surface, muddy out there. Um, as I said earlier on at the start of the show, it's a cold and damp night and mud, an uneven surface for these two teams to try and play football. I don't know if you can hear the constant roar of the A13. It literally does back on to Newham Leisure Centre. There's some trees opposite where I'm standing, which is in the, the stand area. There's no facilities for spectators here other than these these seats but just beyond the trees on the far side of the ground lies the A13 so if you can pick up the roar that's the roar of traffic of the uh, London A13 on a Wednesday night so 12 minutes I'm going to stay with this free kick I might be the eternal optimist dear listeners standing out here in a cold damp January evening sometimes this this, this is like I'm suffering from my art isn't it I'm, I'm bringing the Bring these shows to you, suffering from my art, but for your pleasure. If Leonardo da Vinci had the same issues. I'm going to stay with his free kick. It looks like he's lining up to cross the ball into the box. Probably a good idea. It's a little bit um, out and right side of the central part of the uh, the Cockfosters half. So we'll stay with it in the hope of uh, opportunity. It's floated in towards the left. There's a header down. That's going to go for goal kick. Cock Fosters FC, founded in 1921. They play um, at the Cock Fosters Sports Ground on Chalk Lane, uh, on land donated by Lady Bevan, apparently. I don't know anything about Cock Fosters. It's strange. It's one of those parts of London that I've never been to, and apart from the fact that it forms the end of the tube line, I wouldn't know what else to say about Cock Fosters, other than its double entendre name, of course. 22 minutes, dear listeners. I'd say that Cock Fosters are starting to threaten more. Little opportunity a few moments ago where the striker was put through one on one with a goalkeeper. He managed to do, he actually did well to fend that off. Um, balance of play favouring Cock Fosters. Uh, Clapton are not totally bereft, but uh, they really haven't threatened much in this opening quarter so far. Nil nil. My, my own limited ball skills just called into action, dear listeners, as the ball ran off the side of the pitch. Into where I'm standing, um, and I actually, well, I don't think my control was as good as um, you know Ryan Woods is, perhaps. Little control tap pass back to the five. Cheers, mate. Yeah, I'm very. Um, this, this is the level we're at here. There's the half-time break, dear listeners. One 0 to Cock Fosters, probably justifiably so overall. I'd say. Uh, Claps and haven't really done enough to uh, warrant any kind of um, result other than what they're getting at half-time. Certainly they need to show a little bit more spark and vim in the second half. Good goal from Cock Fosters to take the lead in the 33rd minute from the 8th. Um, but otherwise it's um, a muddy night, cold hustle and bustle. Despite my snarky comments on the venue and, and the uh, football we've seen tonight, dear listeners, um, I just want to say how interesting the history of Claps and Football Club is, I'm uh, just reading from the wiki page here, established in 1877, as we said earlier on, originally there was Downs Football Club playing on Hackney Downs, um, but they were quite um, quite substantial um, footballing figures prior to the start of the First World War, founder members of the Southern League alongside, as we've said, Southampton, Luton, Mill and Reading. Um, they became the first club from Great Britain in 1890 to play in continental Europe, beating a Belgian 11, 7-0 in Antwerp um, and then you know a good track record through the uh, amateur leagues Ishmian leagues Am- amateur cup uh, Ishmian league title in the 1920s and so on and so forth um, this is a big name and it was actually one of the driving reasons why I wanted to start doing these grassroots shows this season um, for two reasons one I became intrigued by the um, off field angst between this club and the breakaway ultra-led Clapton Community Club. Um, Lots of um, quite spiteful comments from the ultras towards the uh, management of this club. 
for reasons that um, I, I don't know, I'm not interested in, but it just intrigued me. Um, secondly, of course, there is, you know, they, they do have a history, as we've said a couple of times, um, long history. They are one of the original members of the Southern League, and the old spotted dog ground, which is where they were based, uh, was, was um, one of London's historic sports venues. So I became intrigued by it. Also, <laughs> I'm going to be up front. Um, it's actually not very, very far away from where I live, so um, quite convenient to get to. And knowing Newham Leisure Centre, as, as I do, convenient parking just outside, and you walk straight in and watch it. So at the moment, they are using Newham Leisure Centre's football pitch as a kind of a... I don't know, one of the questions I want to ask Chris later is whether this is a temporary arrangement and whether it's seen as a long-term thing. Um, as we wait for the teams to come out for the second half. We'll see, we'll see, dear listeners. The crowd looked like a mixture of relatives of the players and um, one or two, like me, pure eccentrics. Like extreme eccentrics. I suppose that's the non-league scene for you, dear listeners, isn't it? I certainly need some action to warm me up. It is cold and damp. The things I do for you, dear listeners. The things I do for you. (laughs) Oh, dear, oh, dear. And away we go, second half, dear listeners. 67 minutes, perhaps and pressing falls more in the second half as they have to. Um, no clear cut chances for either side in, in truth, but a lot more forward um, play from Clapton in this second period. They've had one or two balls flying around in the Cock Foster's penalty area, but to no, um, you know, nothing clear cut. Um, so halfway through the second half, it remains Cock Foster's leading by that slender one goal lead. Uh, just takes one chance for Clapton. Who pressing down the left is going to stay. It's a ball across the face of the goal there. That's going to go for a goal kick. So halfway through the second half, all to play for. I'm aware that as the uh, go- evening has gone along, my erudition is uh, and my the wit and the and the kind of general um, level of uh, my verbal dialogue has become more, more mundane as the cold and damp is starting to gnaw into me a little bit so I'm hoping really this does finish within the 90 tonight rather than any extra time that may be played because it's bloody cold left sided free kick after a bit of a clumsy challenge by the Cock Foster's defence gives Clapton a chance to get another cross into the box increasingly they have the ball flying into the Cock Foster's area, it's a deeper, deeper cross. I think that may be... No, it's been picked up at the far post, but it's, it's not a great event. That looked like a push. Is that a penalty he's given? Yeah, penalty. Push, ooh, obvious, obvious push. Gives Clapton a huge chance now to equalise. Penalty. 75th minute of the game. Drama. As the whist swirls dramatically around the Terence McMillan Stadium. This is a huge chance now for, for Clapton to haul themselves back into a cup tie. Not sure what the rules of competition are. They play extra time after this. So if it goes to a replay, very, very silly error there by the Cock Fox defence. It's looked pretty sound in fairness to over the course of the evening. Here goes the penalty. That's so, saved. Saved onto the post. Opportunity wasted. Wow. Right side of the corner, pushed by the. I think the goalkeeper got a hand to it. I'm a long way away here. I've got to hasten to add, and he seemed to push it onto the post, and it came away from the right side post, leftwards across the penalty area. Massive chance there for the collapse and gone begging. 86 minutes, dear listeners. The um, 87 minutes almost. Clapton actually had the ball in the net a few moments ago from a long route one pump down the middle which um, goalkeeper took a clattering so the referee gave a free kick although they did clapped and briefly had the ball in the net but obviously disallowed they do have a right sided corner increasingly frenetic attempts to get that all important equaliser it's going to be a late late corner here I'll stay with it whilst uh, it comes in from the right that's a deep one into the middle the goalkeeper goes up and takes nicely it's been an interesting evening it's probably um, well it is the most um, grassroots game I think that. I've seen, certainly, since starting to do these these series of shows, which I am hoping will showcase the uh, breadth and, um, shall I call it beauty? I think I will call it the beauty of English lower-level football, um, from Ebbsfleet, which is probably the highest uh, the level. Well, the Dagenham and Redbridge, of course. The Dagenham and Redbridge, didn't Harry and I went there a few weeks ago. That's probably the highest level we've seen. But this has been real kind of... Um, not a million miles from the origins of the game on the parks 
of uh, of the country up and down the land and it's been an interesting event it's a very cold night which is um, obviously part and parcel of, of, of the sport but uh, I've enjoyed it it's been nice to get out of the house and to see a committed game it's uh, yes quality wise of course um, you know you can you can always uh, do better but the one moment of quality has actually led to the goal which at the moment as we tick towards the last few minutes of the game separates the two sides so clearly quality will always win out but it's another left sided corner as I'm rabbiting away here so I'll stay with that just two minutes of regular time to go now left sided corner for Clapton another chance to dig it into them but they've been pretty much in the ascendancy in the second half without carving out any real chances that penalty as we've said will really really dictate that was floated across the penalty area and it comes away now for Cop Fosters to get a chance to break can they find someone in space they can down the middle great tackle there sliding tackle by the central defender kills that moment off just a couple of minutes to go we're uh, coming towards three minutes into time added on to this there's not a lot much um, time added on there is obviously no it's not like a professional game where uh, you're going to get an indication Clapton continues to press down the left nothing there as they came down that left side there and Cop Fosters will bring away um, can only be a minute or two extra to go now here's the 11 on the right hand side at the Clapton end cuts in Ball into the middle. That was a heavy, heavy touch. It falls to the three. The Cunk Foster's three on the edge of the D. There's a nine just inside the penalty area. His shot is blocked. I'm going to stay with it the last few seconds. There's a seven of a chance to shoot from distance. There's the second from distance. Nicely finished by the seven. That's 2-0 to Cunk Foster's game, set and match to the visitors. I don't know what their nickname is. Is it the Cox or the Fosters? They're certainly going to be leaving... The London Borough Newham tonight as victorious away day visitors. There's the full time whistle, two 0 in the end. That late, late extra bit of um, icing on the on the cake for Cockfosters there. Overall, a very honest. I think that's probably the best way to put it. Very honest English lower level cup tie. Played in good spirits. Um, Cockfosters deserved winners on the night, two 0 They will progress in the uh, Arrington Cup the Essex Senior Cup and um, I'm going to go home and get myself a nice warm cup of tea hope you've enjoyed this bit of coverage we hope to be back after the break with the Clapton Chairman Chris Ottaway so stay tuned Huge welcome to Achtung Grassroots now to the Chairman of Clapton FC Mr Chris Ottaway welcome to the show Chris Thank you Nick thanks for the invite Yeah good to good to have you on I really enjoyed <laughs> Despite the cold, despite the damp and the windswept nature of the stadium, I really enjoyed visiting Clapton, uh, unfortunately losing last night to, to Cock Fosters. Yeah. Um, one of London's oldest clubs, Chris. How did you get involved with Clapton? What what um, what, what brought a, you to be chair? Interesting one. I, I, I only sort of came on this year, um, right. the back end of the season when COVID was rearing its ugly head and we had a... There was a, a few Essex Senior League Cup matches that they put together for us. Um, yeah. And I sort of came on board. I was approached, looked at it, and uh, decided to give it a go, really. You know, I've, I've been chair before. I was chairman. You know, I was sort of like pulled Epping out of the fire and we got them running and on, all, on all cylinders. Right. Um, and this, I sort of went, went to Harlow. Um, we won't talk about that, but it, it didn't work out. <laughs> It didn't work out. <laughs> Draw a veil over that then. <laughs> yeah, a bit like a bit staying in a dustbin and being told to stand in the corner, you know what I mean? So I left and I wasn't going to, you know, I was quite happy just spending Saturdays doing other things. And then I was approached, yeah. talked it through with the missus and looked at it and thought, you know what, this is a, you're dead right what you said, Nick. You look at the history. I mean, you're the oldest club in the foot, in, in non league football. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, and the history is just immense, absolutely immense. Um, sadly, it's quite old now, the history. So it'd be nice to sort of, uh, it's a challenge, it's a project. Um, yeah, yeah. Not, I mean, I mean it's not a quick fix by any means, you know, there's, the, there's a lot to be done there. The thing, yeah. thing that struck me standing there last night, um, Chris, was I, I compared it mentally to a lifeboat because, on the one hand, it's great to be alive and it's great to be <laughs> playing, you yeah. know, um, and on the other hand, 
you know the stadium is 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 not ideal from the the, the football spectating point of view. I, um, and I don't think just watching the players last night, um, the, the surface isn't ideal out there for them either to play good football. I mean, um, everyone's doing their best, and I I I I fully take that on board. But it's it's not an ideal setup. I mean, how do you see? Uh, Clapton is 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 the the Terence McMillan Stadium is that seen as a long term thing for you or is that is that at, a, the, the, a... the moment we're talking with the owners, right? We we got sort of a security a tenure there, so we're okay as far as we have to have that as a league requirement. Yeah, um, I I have a vision down there. Um, if I'm honest with you, I think it's got a lot of potential, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done there. I mean, the it's got a it's got a nice car park. I know we don't play it's, on the car park, but it's perfect. I mean, it, what, one problem you get when you go to grounds is getting parked. Go to Cockfosters, and you're more likely going to get a ticket than, the, <laughs> you know, than a burger. Last the last away game with Cockfosters, I got stuck with seventy five pound parking ticket, and there was no mm. signs. I mean, that's an advantage for people visiting us, as they can get off the road. Um, when you walk into it, it's a lovely open area. You know, I, I can see, yeah. I can see hot dog stalls there, but I need yeah. people. Dog stalls, yeah. you know, do it for just one or two people. The stand, you know, I mean, we can it can all be developed. Um, and we're talking, we're talking, working very closely with the leisure center with respect to the clubhouse. We need a new clubhouse, or we need it at least renovated. Yeah, um, it's all about uh, it's a it's a to coin a phrase, it's overused, but it's so true. It's a match day experience we need to create. We haven't got that at the minute. It's cold, it's bleak. Um, we watch the football and we go, and there's nowhere to go. I'm in the middle of nowhere down there, Nick. You know, apart from the kebab house on the corner, which I might say is quite nice. Um, apart from that, <laughs> nothing around. You know, you um, it's changed so much. The I mean, I used to live in East London uh, back in the eighties, and it's the nineties, and it's. Uh, in fact, I lived in Clapton for a while. That that, that threw yeah. me where we had sort of down in Plaza, but um, yeah. it's got a lot of potential. Um, we could certainly bring it up to higher league requirements, but we need support. And one of the things we need is it's a catch-22. We need to give a match day experience for people to want to come to us. Um, yeah. For example, we need food. We, we need a burger bar. We need a bar. We need to sell beer. Yeah. So people want to come over to us and have a nice time. So we're building on that. We've got the, we've got the existing little clubhouse open. And we're selling hot drinks and cold and cold soft drinks, yeah. Uh, and we we're, we're putting on a little bit of food, but it's you know it's cold food at the minute, you know sandwiches and bits and pieces. But the long term goal is to have a proper bar facility. Um, some of our some of our competitors in the league, uh, you, you know, I went to Woodford a few months ago. I was absolutely knocked over with what they've done over there. Yeah. It's, a, it's a different level, a different level. And we've got to sort of use those as our our targets for the future as a benchmark. Um, try and get up to that level. Cockfosters is another great place to go. You know, I mean, there's facilities. Right. You go there and you think, you know, I wouldn't mind getting over there at half one for a three o'clock kick. I'll have a couple of beers, something to eat. You know, have a catch up with a few people. Then go yeah. and watch the match. Which Some generates money, Chris, doesn't it? That's, that's what's going to generate the money that spins on, you know. Absolutely. And, and people then decide to come back and they tell their mates you know yeah the actual terence mcmillan stadium incident i had a meeting this week about this actually and built i think it was about six ninety sixty three. i think yes and it's been a while the, yeah the england 1966 yeah. world cup team actually trained on that pitch did they i didn't know that i didn't know i didn't that. know that i didn't know that no yeah no i knew the brazilians trained on finsbury park i, I knew that one because they stayed at the alexandra national hotel Right, um, right. In, in the sixties, it turned out to be the biggest knocking shop in Acne later on. But um, <laughs> the uh, yeah, the Terence McMillan Stadium was quite a, <laughs> quite a high, highly thought of place. And when you look at the stadiums around and football facilities around that area, there isn't that many really. Um, no, you've got our old home, of course. You know, but you know that I, I could I can still look at the Terence McMillan and with the right support we could go forward there. Um, I would agree with that. I'm, I mean, I'm a local resident. And I, it's funny you say about the parking. One of the things I commented on when I, I was, you know, doing some uh, comments last night was the fact that I could park straight outside. It's really, 
you know, it, it's it's nice. It's, there is parking yeah. there. Yeah. Benefit of it being open is that there is parking there. Um, I do agree with you, and and you're answering a lot of the questions that I actually was was keen to ask, really, because you know, as as, as a spectator, it was it was um, as you bleak is probably a, a, the right choice of word, but. Um, I, I do agree with you about the potential. It's it's an area where there's nothing else like it around there. That little part of uh -huh. you know walkable distance from yeah. from the Terence McMillan, and that's that's got to be a big plus point for the location. Um, I, I I actually a few times I go by tube. I live in Epping now, so sometimes I go by tube, especially if I'm wearing yeah. a shirt. And um, I, I had this wild idea one one Saturday. I thought I'd do some reconnaissance first. And I'd work out a pub call from Canning Town uh, uh, Station to the ground. So you get you All get right, the Canning yeah. Town and you get on a bus. And I had this sort of vision of sort of like a nice little sort of like a few drinks on the way to the ground. But there aren't any pubs. You get to... Um, no, there aren't. I was going to say, I don't know where you're going because I'm trying to think. You get to the Green <laughs> Gate, which I think is a tech... A te a That's Tesco's Tesco, now, isn't it? Yeah. It breaks my heart, actually. And you go down <laughs> you go down Prince Regent, there's nothing. Now, no, no. that... That disadvantage can work to be our advantage because if we can work and create the match day facility, if you've got a football ground with pubs around it or or castle places, a lot of people say, "Come on, I meet you up the King's Head. We'll have a couple. We'll go and watch the football." Yeah, they haven't got that facility where we are. But what they can do is say, "Meet you down at Clapton at one o'clock, and we'll have a few beers and have a chat." So we need to capture that advantage and make sure that we try and. Uh, improve our match day facility just by having a few basic things in place, you know, like a bar, hot food, just a burger or sausage rolls, or give someone yeah, something. the basics. I agree. You know, I, agree. I mean, the, the temporary accommodation is, shall we say, adequate, using that term very loosely. I'd mm. like to see bricks and mortar with a bit of security there. Yeah. Obviously, that's the other area. You know, if, if, if you had a, a bar you start to put money into a building, you obviously need to make sure it's secure. Um, so that's an area. But we are talking about that. I mean, the bottom line is, uh, after last night's result, you know, to coin a phrase, we've got to focus on the league now. We've got nothing else to do. <laughs> and we've got to stay in the Essex Senior League. That's the priority for me this year. I mean, we, we've had a terrible... Just surviving season. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's been a nightmare, to be honest. You know, um, you know, we started the season off and we... We struggled, but we were slowly making an improvement. And when I say that, we were losing 2 nil instead of 5 nil. Um <laughs> And then it was all getting terribly, terribly worrying for me. You know, I started to started to get a bit twitchy. Hmm. Uh, at one point, I had more points on my driving license than we had in the league. <laughs> so you get a bit worried then, don't you? You know, so um, anyway, anyway, all of a sudden, I had the most amazing week in football that anyone could ever imagine. We played uh, Stanway Rovers on the Saturday. They were top of the right. league at the time. And we, we held them. In fairness, they held us because we were the better team. So we got a point. That was nice. We, um, on the Wednesday, we went to Ilford and turned them over. Quite well, too. We played very well. Yeah. So that was that. And then on the Friday, two days later, we went to Woodford and turned them over. So we, all of a sudden, we've acquired seven points. in a, Building momentum. In a week, yeah. you know, and uh, I'm, I'm out buying lottery tickets now. You know, I'm really happy. <laughs> that was on the Friday. On the Sunday, our whole football management team left. Yeah, I so, saw that on the um, on the Twitter football. feed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, head of football, manager, coach, goalkeeping coach, physio, and a handful of our players. They all disappeared. Right. Right. So all of a sudden now, we're left with complete start again, you know, a blank sheet of paper again. So obviously Mike's come in as a manager, and he's got a—he's he's had a headache. There's no doubt about it. You know, he's like having a pre-season every week's a pre-season, trying to get the yeah. right team. Yeah, but he's definitely making progress um, with the resources that he's got. But we've had to—we've had to start again. But looking at the league table, you know, I mean, I don't want to sound—I don't want to sound too negative, but. You know, a cup's one thing, but you know, Essex, Essex is your bread and butter. Yeah. Is, is what we have to do. You know, we got to build on something in that league. We don't want to get relegated. You know, there was I some mean, good and, spirit shown last night, Chris. I mean, the, the yeah. goal. I know you were. I don't think you were down there, but no. um, 
the the goal from um, Clark Foster's was a spectacular goal, and I don't think as much anyone could have done about that. You'd take a goalkeeper at the top level to have kept that one out. It's a great goal. Um, but And I thought, you know, um, I thought Clapton showed good spirit to take the game to Clark Foster's in the second half. In the end, yeah. it just fell short, and that's, that's football. Yeah. But... Um, I thought there was some good, some what you might call spine in the team. There, there were players that wanted to get forwards and get at it, and I, I like that last night. Um, so I think there's a lot to build on there. Just yeah, as my play, we play them, yeah, we play very well at their place in the league. We've got a, we've got a draw up there, and we, you know, we should have won that. You know, we, we, everyone says it, doesn't they? But it's true. You know, when I think about it, we had enough chances to put that game to bed, and they got away yeah. in the fourth. Party, but it was a good, it was a good game, but. Yeah, uh, Saturday is the big game. Saturday is a 12-pointer. People say it's a six-pointer. Our match Saturday away at St. Margaret's Bree is definitely a 12-pointer. To fend it off is. the uh, the bottom places, yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's a little group of us in there. I mean, we've got, a, I think it's a seven-point a seven point cushion, and you know as well as I do, that can be eaten up in a couple of weeks. Well, one or two bad results, and that's gone. Exactly. It? So, so we, we were at St. Margaret's Bree on, on Saturday. Uh, that's a must-win match. That's a must-win match. Um, I mean, I, I just think it's—I just think it's great, and I mean this um, because I, I, I pride myself on a little being a little bit of a historian of football. Clapton is one of the great names. I was looking at the history of the oh. club, and you got great players like Walter Toll as as, as this huge yeah. figure, one of the first black, um, one of the first black players in 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 the game, and a, and a first World War hero killed yeah. in action. Very famous yeah. name, part of Clapton yeah. Clapton's story. Um, and I know, I know, you know. I suppose just touch on it in a way, uh, Chris, because the last few years have been quite difficult with turmoil off the off the pitch, really, for yeah. the club, and then then yeah. losing the old spotted dog, which is a historic venue. Um, yeah. But I've got to agree, I, I, you know, as much as it's easy to go to Terence McMillan and think all, of all the things that's wrong with it, you, I, I agree with you. I think there is potential there, and I, I think it's going to be great if you can. You know, so fulfill that vision that you you touched yeah, on. Because I, 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 I certainly see it. I mean, I, you know, I've walked in, I've walked in there. I can that that open area as you go through the gates. You know, there's yeah. so much you could you could have a, a tea wagon there, or you could have a burger stand there. You know, something. Need, yeah, yeah. We need to we need to work on that. We work, we're talking to the leisure centre. We had a we had a crowd funder going for the sort of renovation of the clubhouse and you know the money is sort of ring fence for that now um, yeah but we need to seriously sit down and, and work out where we're going with the stadium and we are you know we've had meetings it's very difficult when you're a tenant as opposed to um, yeah the owner landlord, yeah. landlord as yeah. such you yeah know, everything yeah. has to go back up but you know potentially it's potentially it's it's not a bad venue How's the club's to... relationship with Newham, Chris? Because I, I, I read a lot of love for the um, community club that's um, taking over um, the old spotted dog, but you don't see so much. No, um, no. Um, what can I call it? Um, the, the local politicians don't seem so keen to stand on Clapton's um, sidelines as they do on the other one. So there are. Oh, that, there's an interesting point, that, Nick. I, I sent uh, sent out a lot of letters to councillors asking yeah. them. We were going to have a fun day over there before COVID really its ugly head and killed it all. Yeah. Uh, and I, I sent letters to the, a lot of the councillors and you'd be surprised. I was surprised that a lot of them are quite positive. Good. There are, um, and some of the emails I got back from some councillors confirm what you just said about, you know, the, the relationship. Uh, I think, I think there's a bit of an interesting relationship between councillors in Newham anyway. I don't think they're all singing from the same hymn sheet. No. Um, so we've got to just try and um, hang on to those that support us. Build relationship with those that are potentially friends of the club. I think that's, yeah. you know, that's yeah. I mean, okay. you know I'm, I'm an open book anyway. You know, I just want, I have visions, you know, I'd, I'd like to see 300 people walking into, into the stadium on a match day. Yeah, uh, and it's possible. I mean, it's it's quite re it's quite feasible to do, but it's a lot of work's got to be done. Commitment you've got to get, as I say, without a match day experience, you've got no chance. You know, I mean, thirty no, people. No, no, no. You know, I mean, honestly, thirty people for a game is just unbelievable. I, I used to get hundred people at Epic. You know, yeah, with, yeah. But it, but I don't blame people for not going because when I think of it, 
What is there there? There's nothing much, just a match. Yeah, there's nothing there. There's not even much, to be honest with you. I, I used to go to the gym in the in the leisure centre. There's not even much in there in the way of what you might call social facilities, which is a no. normal thing that you get in. No. So, mate, I don't know. I mean, that, that may well, be see, an we, area we, that we come together, you know. Yeah, work yeah. together. And say, look, you know, if we, if we put some facility in there that we can all enjoy, great. Why not? You know, but it's as, at the moment, it's as good as it gets. Yeah, and and everyone's blaming COVID, but but COVID has completely and utterly put us on, on hold in a lot of areas. Another one is commercial investment. Yeah, uh, because of COVID, because of furlough, because of the uncertainty with, and even now there's still uncertainty. Yeah, it's very difficult to talk to companies about putting money into a, a football club as a sponsor. The reason mm. being is that if that company has been making people redundant or furloughed or, or, or uh, has reduced their time, working yeah. time, working hours of money, they're hardly going to give us a few, Bob. So No, it's um, so, so it's seen as a luxury, it, isn't it? You know, yeah, yeah, I've got a couple of uh, reasonably sized sponsors. One, the decision should come back to us within a week. Um, so there's, there's hope there, but it's hard. It really is hard. People just don't want to spend money. And I can understand that. You know, no, no one no. wants around the corner even now. But it's a lot, as I say, it's, it's a long-term project for the club. There aren't many places we could really play. I mean, it's a shame about the air and hours, really. That's, that, that's criminal, isn't it? Over on, yeah. on Lee Road. You know, the fact that seeing yeah. there in disarray. You know, yeah. My art scene. Now, I remember that when that was an upper, you know, an up-and-coming club and it was a great place to go on a Saturday for we were playing away, you know, so... Um, Absolutely. Standing there last night, I, think, I was thinking to myself, I take my hat off to... The likes of yourself, everyone, the volunteers that put um, put on football locally. I mean, you know, it's not easy, and as you say, immense hard work. Um, and I, I just take my hat off because it's it's like anything; you don't know what you got till it's gone, Chris. And um, you know, uh, clubs like Clapton are the lifeblood of, of of the of the game. You know, and um, I just really, I'm, I'm really um, pleased to see that the club is is, is still alive and going. And as much as, yeah, absolutely. And then you can build from there. So I'm going to, um, the one thing I wanted to say is if we can give any more publicity at any point, then do let me know. I mean, we're doing these shows really to try and help promote the local clubs like Clapton. So um, if, yes, I mean, anything we great. can do along the way, mate, more than happy to. No, that's great. I mean, I'll be on every week if I had my way. But, uh... <laughs> well, I might take you up on that, but... <laughs> Your viewing rating would collapse, but um, <laughs> no, re really appreciated because we need all the publicity we, we can get. All the, we want good publicity too. And you absolutely, know what, absolutely. You know what I mean when I say that. I haven't got to spell it out, but you know we need positive stuff, um, and we're getting yeah. positive stuff. There's no doubt about it. You know, I mean, as I say, I only came in this year, so you know, it's it would be wrong of me and inappropriate of me to comment on past things that have happened. And I've no wish to. It's what's happened when I came and what we do going forward. Yeah, um, all yeah. I mean, it's things like pre-season friendlies. You know, trying to get a decent club or two, you know, to play us um, mm. would be good. You know, things like that, or even having links, links with other clubs, or, or you know, just having some form of going forward, some partnership thing. You know, where we have a game once a year or something. You know, yeah. It's uh, that's really important to a club like ours. I mean, I've got a few contacts uh, at step four. Have said to me, you know, well, hopefully we can get a pre season matching, etc. But there's a long time between now and pre season. We need to get this yeah, league. Absolutely. absolutely. It's, it, you know, we're moving slowly. We, we have a small committee. Everything's small, really, to be fair. Um, yeah. But, you know, the people that are involved are really committed. Really committed. Yeah, that, that stood out. That stood out for me last night. As I say, my yeah. first visit. It's not an easy. Um, it's not an easy you know it's voluntary to start with it's a hard hobby it's a hard hobby in the sense absolutely that get, it is yeah. get there early and you know the manager and, and his staff and support and helpers you know they've got to get the the kit ready you know make sure the balls are pumped up get the match sheets in and like all leagues you get fines for everything don't you yeah you know if that's, yeah, if that's late you get a 50 pound fine if that's not done you get another fine you know um yeah. so you have to be on on the ball there um Absolutely. So, far, so far we are I mean, you know we have got certainly have got a good team but it's a small team 
yeah. but at the minute you know we're doing what we can um and it's just a matter of making sure it goes forward and it you know we're talking to the leisure center we have we, we're trying to get approval for at least getting the um clubhouse renovated etc that would be a good starting point chris yeah um, without a doubt you know i mean uh you know, <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be forced to start bringing alcohol in and give them, <laughs> give them away with a packet of Chris. A packet of Chris would be two pound fifty to get a free bottle of Bud. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, that's how I feel about it. You know, it, it, <laughs> trouble is, I run my own business, and I, I can't. I'm not very good at, at having str- sort of layers of management approval. You know, if I want to do something, I will do it. You go do it. Yeah. Yeah. If it's wrong. Okay, I'll learn by that. But you know, just sit, sit and wait and wait and wait. You know, so. I get a little bit frustrated at times, you know, it's just a matter of if it's a good idea, let's give it a go. If it all goes wrong, well, blame me. I don't mind. I'm yeah, not, not yeah. Going to but, yeah, it's, uh, that's the thing, you know, we're not going to get people coming up to see us if they're just going to walk in through the turnstile and stand around. They might as well go down a pub, well, might as well go down Anthony Marshes and watch a match, right? You? you know, it's, it's the same <laughs> well, match. That's, that's, yeah. I, I, wish, I wish you, I wish Clapson well and we'll stay in touch. And, yeah, I uh, really appreciate it, Nick. Thanks for the You're chat. You're welcome. You're welcome, Chris. Good to talk to you, mate. Thanks for coming and on you. the show. Thanks very much.